This week on The Wire, REA and Westpac tip big price rises, interest payments at 35 year low, and CBA reject bubble fears. G'day guys, my name's Tim Guest, and welcome to The Wire, the week in real estate. You can get all the top stories happening this week in real estate, finance, investment, and more. Our top story for this week, REA and Westpac tip big rises. So big increases in house prices have been forecast with the region set to outperform and the luxury end expected to star in the major cities. Realestate.com.au's Property Outlook Report 2021 says Australians have never been wealthier, which is reflected in the rise and rise of the luxury property market. Now the report says this unique trend of house price growth during a recession did not occur during the GFC or the early 90s recession. Towards the end of 2020, views per listing on realestate.com homes uh, over 10 million increased by 150%. Now the report says investors are returning to the market with a focus on regional Australia, which will again outperform the rest of the country. While views per listing rose 16% capital cities during the second half of 2020, the increase in regional Australia was 44%. Westpac economists have lifted their forecast for dwelling prices and are now expecting 10% gains in both 2021 and 2022. Moving on to our next story, interest payments at 35 year low. So the share of household income being used to pay interest on debt has fallen to the lowest level in 35 years, freeing up tens of billions of dollars a year to be spent in other ways. The interest paid by Australian households has dropped 5.5% of disposable income, the lowest since the mid 80s, and that's from analysis from AMP Capital. Now that compares to 9% in mid-2019 and 13% in 2008. The decline has been driven by lower official interest rates, which were reduced by an unprecedented low of 0.1% in November. AMP Capital Chief Economist Shane Oliver expects the fall in interest payments as a share of disposable income is injecting an extra $9 billion into the household sector each quarter compared to two years ago. He says that in turn, that has supported consumer confidence and spending. Many borrowers have used savings from lower interest payments to reduce debt. Now the Reserve Bank agrees and says substantial payments were made into mortgage offset and redraw accounts between March and December last year. This amount totaled almost $40 billion. And now for our final story of the week, CBA reject bubble fears. So Commonwealth Bank CEO Matt Common has dampened concerns about rising house prices, saying the growth spurt is being fueled by owner occupiers, not investors, piling into the Sydney and Melbourne markets. Common has underlined several distinct characteristics of today's market compared with earlier property booms. He says that in the middle of the last decade, more than half of new lending in Sydney and New South Wales was flowing to investors. He says if you go back to 2014 and 2015, most of that growth was coming out of Sydney and Melbourne. At the moment, the fastest growing capital cities are Darwin, Perth, then Canberra. There's a number of regional locations that are also growing very rapidly. In fact, Sydney and Melbourne are not strong on a relative basis, especially compared to regional areas. Now, Bendigo and Adelaide Bank Chief Executive Marnie Baker has highlighted the strength of the regional property market and owner occupiers in driving recent house price growth. She says, our own book is 85% owner occupied, so it's actually not being led by investors. Now, that's a difference that we need to take into account. Well, guys, they're the top stories happening this week. Now, please don't forget to like, comment, and share this video and follow, subscribe wherever you are seeing this. Have a great week. And don't forget guys, there's only one thing in life that makes a difference, that is action. Thanks a lot, bye for now.